If you connect a battery, an electric motor, and a speaker in series together, now you don't need the light bulb, but I decided to throw that in uh, just for the sake of it. But if you connect these things in series in a circuit together, something interesting happens. You can actually hear the sound of the electric motor in the speaker. Now I'm going to show you how it sounds shortly. So that's how it sounds when the speaker is in series with the motor, the light bulb, and the 6 volt battery. Now let's see how it sounds when the speaker is not present, so you can see the difference between the two. Without the speaker present, it clearly sounds very different. All you could hear is the sound of the motor. But when the speaker was present, you were hearing the sound of the electric motor and the speaker simultaneously. So now let's see how it sounds again with the speaker present. So as you can see, there is a difference. You can actually hear the sound of the electric motor in the speaker. Now why is that the case? When an electric current flows through this circuit and the motor begins to spin, the motor generates a back EMF, an electromotive force. It also generates an AC sine wave that rides on the DC signal. And that sine wave that is produced by the motor you can actually, it's actually carried through the wires and you could hear it in the speaker. The frequency of that sound wave will depend on many things. How fast the motor is spinning, which is based on how much current is in the circuit. And that can be controlled by the voltage that you apply in a circuit and the electric resistance, rather, the electrical resistance of the circuit. The motor has its own resistance, the speaker has its own internal resistance, and also the light bulb as well. So all of these factors, how much current is flowing in the circuit, what voltage that you apply to the motor, and any other elements in the circuit will affect the frequency of the sound that you're going to hear in the, in the speaker. So let's say we have this circuit without the motor present. Let's say we have the battery, the 6-volt battery, the light bulb, and the speaker. We're just going to have a DC signal with a voltage of 6 volts. And because the voltage is fairly constant, it's just going to look like a straight line. Now with the motor present, the voltage won't be constant. It will fluctuate around some voltage. Let's say probably a little bit less than 6. Let's say 5.5. But notice that it's not constant at 5.5. It's fluctuating. That fluctuation that we see here. That's the signal that the speaker receives and converts it into a sound wave. So that's the AC signal that is riding on, I mean, that is the AC wave that is riding on the DC signal. And that's what the speaker picks up when the motor is spinning in this circuit. But you could try it out. You can try different motors and see how it sounds on the speaker. You can try applying different voltages to see how the sound changes. But that's how you can hear the sound of an electric motor in a speaker. It's by connecting these two elements in series in a circuit. So that's basically it for this video. I just wanted to give you a fun fact about electric motors and speakers. So if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click on that notification bell while you're at it.
Now for those of you who have an interest in electricity and science experiments, I'm going to put a few links in the description section below this video where you can access other videos on other stuff like this. So thanks again for watching.